today's video we'll be using these devices to measure the speed of sound. And we'll use the speed of sound to measure distance. Let's get started. Well, before we get started, I wanted to mention that these devices are relatively inexpensive and if you can put together a basic Lego project, I doubt you'll have a problem putting together these. All the parts are easy to get hold of and, like Lego, all parts are reusable for other projects. I hope some of you will give it a go. Of course, you don't have to make them, just sit back and enjoy. In a separate video, I'll go through the builds in detail, link will be in the description when it's ready, and at the end of this video, and in the description, I'll give you a shopping list for any eager beavers who just can't wait. Once the button has been pressed, this device will send out a sound wave that will travel 2 metres out, bounce off a board, travel 2 metres back, and it will record how long that whole process took and display the result in microseconds on this screen here. We're going to do it five times and record the results on the table. This device measures temperature and air pressure. I'm measuring this because it affects the speed of sound. So if I press this button, you can see on this screen here, it's saying the temperature here and the air pressure there. In another video, I'll go through this in more detail, but it's just controlled by a Raspberry Pi Pico here. It doesn't have to be that. It could be something like an Arduino, for example. This device uses one of these, which is here, to send out a sound wave, and it measures how long it takes to hit a surface and come back. And when I press this button at the bottom, it displays the time it took here in microseconds at the top. A microsecond is equal to 0 0.000001 seconds, one millionth of a second, or 10 to the minus 6 seconds. We're about to start the experiment where we'll time how long it takes for the sound wave to be released from our device, bounce off the board back there, and bounce back. And we'll do that five times. Let's get started. Press the button. The temperature is 18.8 degrees Celsius. On the thermostat, it's 18.7 degrees Celsius. The air pressure is 994.93. Now for the first one, press the button. 11707. We're going to do it four more times. All finished, ready to analyse the results. Let's use our results to work out the speed of sound in this room when the temperature is between 18.7 and 18.8 .8 degrees Celsius and the air pressure is 994.93 hectopascals. Speed is equal to distance divided by time. We're going to be measuring distance in metres and time in seconds. So if my sister travelled 2 metres in 1 second, her distance would be 2 metres divided by her time, which would be one second, and her speed would be two divided by one, which is two meters per second. The sound wave that our device gave out traveled two meters out and two meters back, giving us a total distance of four meters. We measured how long that took and did it five times. And my sister wrote how long it took each time down on this table. We're going to find the average time of these five results and we'll use that to measure the speed of sound. We'll do that by adding all five measurements together and then dividing them by five. We have the distance in metres but we need the time in seconds and at the moment the time is in microseconds. One million microseconds is equal to one second. So if we divide this number by a million, we should get how many seconds it's worth. So, six zeros, so we need the decimal point. One, two, three, four, five, six. So the answer is naught point naught. One one six nine five eight seconds. Finally, speed is equal to distance in meters divided by time in seconds. So our distance is four meters divided by our time in seconds, which is here. Naught point naught one one six nine five eight seconds equals we get our calculator out. 342.003. 342.003 meters per second. 
Now we've worked out the speed of sound through air in our lounge. Let's see how accurate our results are. I've just gone to Wikipedia and searched for the speed of sound. And on the right hand side, we have the speed of sound in my lounge, which we've just worked out. And let's compare. So straight away, we can see that the speed of sound is approximately 343 meters per second. So we're pretty close straight off. And if we scroll down, we'll come across this table here. And you can see that the temperature affects the speed of sound. So as the temperature varies, the speed of sound varies. When we measured the speed of sound in our lounge, the temperature was about 18 degrees. So on the table, we should be between 15 and 20 degrees Celsius. So the speed of sound should be between 340 and 343 meters per second. So our results are pretty accurate. Now we know the speed of sound in our lounge, we're gonna put that into this device. This device will also measure the time. From those two measurements, we will tell it how to work out the distance. So we'll use it sort of like a ruler. We're going to use the speed of sound to work out the distance from our device to the surface that the sound wave is going to be bouncing off. What's that calculation going to be? Let's start with what we know. The speed of sound, which we know in this room, is equal to 342.003 metres per second, because we've just worked that out. But I need that in millimetres per microsecond. So we need to convert this. So let's start with converting it to millimetres per second. Well, there's a thousand millimetres in a metre. So we'll start by times in this number by a thousand. So we'll just move the decimal point one, two, three here. So the speed of sound in this room is 342,003 millimetres per second. Now we just need to convert it into millimetres per microsecond. Well, there's a million microseconds in a second, so we just need to divide this number by a million and we'll have our answer. Six zeros, so we'll move the decimal point from here to one, two, three, four, five, six zeros there. So the answer is 0 0.342003 millimetres per microsecond. So the formula is going to be the speed, which we've just worked out, times by the time. I'll just put a T for time because we, our device already knows the time it takes for the sound wave to bounce off the surface and bounce back. This will give us the distance from our device to the surface that our sound wave is bouncing off and back again. But we just want half of that, which is the distance from our device to the surface. That's just this times by this divided by two, or halved. And I'm gonna do that by taking it all in brackets and timesing it by 0 0.5. Mathematically, you don't need those brackets, but I think it captures what's happening better. The formula we've just worked out will give us the distance from our device to the surface that the sound wave is going to bounce off. And we want that distance to be displayed on this screen here. Up here, I have the code for our device down here. There'll be another video explaining this in detail and how we made this, um, but if you did want to access the code now, it's on our GitHub, the link should be in the description. The bit of the code that we're interested in is this bit here. This T is just the time, and this is times, and then this number here is the speed of sound in millimetres per microsecond. We need to change this to the value that we've just worked out, um, the speed of sound in my lounge, and I've written that on a piece of paper just down here. So we'll put that value in now. And then you can see it's just all times by 0 0.5 or a half. I saved all our code back onto our device. Let's go test it out. The sound waves are gonna be emitted from our device and they'll bounce off the board, bounce back, and hopefully it will display the time it took on the screen here. And it should use our formula to calculate the distance from our device to the board and display it here. So let's give it a go. Let's check how accurate our device is. Currently, it is two meters away from the board, which is 2,000 millimeters. So when I press the button, it should display 2,000 as distance. Okay. 2001, that's pretty close. Let's try another one. Let's go 
170, which is 1,700 millimetres. Let's press the button. Oh, 1,699. That is so close. One millimetre out okay. again. Let's reset. Let's try another one. Okay, let's go. 1,750. 1,750.54.542. That is so good. Half a millimetre out. That's so close. One last thing I wanted to mention before we go, not to confuse anyone. Let's say this is the device that emits the sound waves and this is the surface that the sound waves are bouncing off. The distance we want to measure is from here to here. Let's call that value x. But the actual distance that the sound wave travels is from here to here. Let's call these distances y. You can probably see there's going to be a few inaccuracies since the distance that the sound wave actually travels is a little bit longer than our imagined distance. And you can see the closer the surface is to the device, the larger the difference, and the further away, the more negligible the difference. Also, of course, if you did want to work out what this middle length was, if you knew this distance here, you can use Pythagoras, since this is a right angle. In another video, I'll go through how I coded and made these projects, but both of them are super cheap to make. These little screens, these are SSD 1306s, and you can get them for about two to three pounds. The cheapest I've seen is about a pound. They're both controlled by Raspberry Pi Picos, and they cost about three pounds sixty. Jumper wires you can pick up for a few pence. Breadboards, again, very cheap, three or four pounds. Um, I think you can get a bunch of these little ones for about a pound. This, which is the HCSR04, ultrasonic distance sensor that costs about two to three pounds and I've actually seen them for 99p. Finally we have this little device here that measures the temperature and air pressure. This is the BPM180 barometric pressure sensor. Again very cheap about two to three pounds. You can get them for 99p as well. The prices all vary depending on where you get them from and how long you're willing to wait for them to arrive. You'll also need one of these switches and um, I got a bag of these for about a couple of pounds. Oh, he's died. Never mind. <laughs> we'll be doing a lot more projects like this. Um, we'll also be covering the full GCSE topic physics and the full course. Um, so there's a lot more on waves and um, sound as well. Um, so if you're interested in that sort of stuff, then do continue watching this space. Um, yeah. Until next time. Bye. <laughs> bye. 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 <laughs> really hope you enjoyed it. Bye.